That's how I'm gonna deal with that animal. I'm gonna find him. I'm gonna end him. No police. Marcus, I love you. I'm your wife. I'm your ride or die, but this, this is a little too much for me. Guns and killing people? We're not murderers. We're not murderers, Marcus. Marcus, say something. I'm telling you, Shonda, it was horrible. It was terrifying. I've never seen so much rage from Marcus before. It was like a whole other guy in my kitchen last night. So you really think he'll kill him? Girl, yes. It's a definite possibility. And as crazy as it is for me to say that, you should have seen that look in his eyes. Well, it must have been some luck. Girl, yes. And in that face, it was no doubt. No, no, not Marcus. He's way too gentle of a soul. Besides, I think him buying the gun and fantasizing about the guy that killed his mother is just his way of getting over the grief. Marcus is a good guy. He'll do the right thing. He'll probably throw the gun away in the trash in like a week. Yeah, I guess. And you know, I have known Marcus a little bit longer than you have. Oh, come on, Shonda. What, a whole day longer? You said you met him once at the Verizon store in Mechanicsville. Yeah, I did. My phone was acting so funny. It had so many bugs in it. Anyway, I went down there and Marcus was behind the counter and he fixed it. He really hooked your girl up. It took me like 10 minutes to explain everything that was wrong with it. But he listened. He was kind. He was sweet, even then. Yeah, I know we went over all this when I introduced you to him as my boyfriend. Yeah, but there's a part of the story that I didn't tell you. I was there for a long time. I mean like a long time. Like 35 minutes. Just waiting for someone to even see me. And this guy in front of me was working with this girl, and he was letting this girl have it. I mean, like, chewing into her for, like, a minute. It got so bad, I thought she was going to cry. She even said that she was, like, new or something, that she'd only been there for, like, three days. Anyway, Marcus was working with another customer, and he stopped. He came over, and he told that guy to shut his slimy self down. <laughs> he said he was getting a little carried away. And you know Marcus. It was all smooth and magical. He even got the guy to apologize. Yeah. Oh, well, I've never heard that story before, but that does sound like my Marcus. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't have to yell or fight or blast anybody that day. Besides, give the police a little bit of credit. I'm sure they'll find this guy long before Marcus gets a chance to. Yeah, that would be ideal. Yeah, so when um what I did was drop the bass, and I'm going to stack the vocals. And, uh, hey, Melinda. <laughs> Let me uh, call you back, bro. Hi. Hi, friend. Again, friend? It's funny we keep meeting like this. I'm beginning to think you're doing this on purpose. I mean, you keep on rolling up on me in my studio sessions. <laughs> so where's Joe? Uh, you know, he's upstairs handling the business as usual. Um, he'll be down in a minute. Okay. And you're just recording a session and you're waiting to pay him? Uh, you got it. You know, I just got finished laying my track now. It's about my ex-wife. It's called This Bitch Were Taught. It. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. So, um, how's Marcus? Oh, you know, he's still really hurt and dealing with the pain. I actually came here to put a deposit on a session for him. It's kind of like therapy for him, you know? He really can sing, and he enjoys making music. So I was hoping it'd be something to get his mind off everything. Yeah. Well, you know these things take time. So, how are you doing? Oh, it's not about me. I'm not that selfish. I'm fine. I'm just trying to be here for my husband in his time of need. Right. Well, oh, and he really appreciates you chasing down all those crazy leads and interviewing slash interrogating people all over town. He told me you even got your ex-partner from the force involved. Yeah, well, you know, I have a mother too, and I'm more than happy to do my part. I'm just sorry that nothing came up. You know, all we managed to do was simply exonerate people. Well, I thank you just the same. Yeah, well, you know, I just wanted to check on you guys, see how Marcus was doing. You know, he seems withdrawn lately. You know, every time I try to reach out and talk to him, he just ignores me and walks in the house. Oh, no, no. It's certainly nothing against you. It's just, Marcus has really been, this whole month has been taking a toll on him, and he's just been really disappointed that nothing's come up about the shooter. And he's just been in this rut lately. But, you know, he's getting there. All right. Well, 
You want to stay outside or you want to come in? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I had to take a call. Um, Fred, you gonna pay with car cash or card? Hey, Melinda. Hey, baby. Come sit down. Have a drink with me. What are you doing home so early? You usually don't get here so much later. Blah, blah, blah. Work. I've had enough of work. I took off today. And besides, I'd rather spend time with you than them any day. Well, that's sweet, baby, but you can't keep taking off like this. Your boss isn't going to keep putting <sighs> up with it. Forget them, man. Like, I am Marcus Redding. They can't do nothing to me.